because of my circumstances, I'm disqualified to an extent to be involved. But that won't that won't discourage me from telling the people that I care about that are still qualified to be involved to get involved and do something. You know what I mean? Right. And I think that's what we need to be pushing. That's the type of message we need to be pushing. Honor our ancestors. Honor what they went through, man. You know what I'm saying? The, the sacrifices that they made. Everything is not fair. And I get that. And everything is not good. But it's no excuse. When you think about our ancestors and people like Dr. Martin Luther King, it's no excuse to sit on the sidelines, man. Right. It's no excuse to complain about what's going on and do nothing about it. Right. It's no excuse because when you do that, you're doing exactly what white supremacist people like that want you to do. I see. I see. That's, that's why I see it. I see it. And then another, another thing about that is just, you know, we are so, we so divided, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to even find a place and where to start. Because when, with, with that division, you know what I'm saying, that we don't we don't trust each other, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard for us to even speak to each other, you know what I'm saying, without a weird, crazy thought going through our mind. But what most of us don't understand is that that's stemming from something that was that was programmed, that, you know what I'm saying, that's deeply rooted within right. us when, when everything that was going on. But I remember when we was having a conversation, I talked about how, because we were talking about honoring, you know what I'm saying, the stuff that yeah. our ancestors went through and then, you know what I'm saying, all the work that, the groundwork that Martin Luther King had put in. And I remember telling you that uh, when I was when I was locked up at Turner Center, it was a it was right. it was Martin Luther King Day, and I was coming down, yeah. and I had just got through taking a shower, and I'm finna come down and probably play chess or something. And when I was coming yeah. down, it was a bunch of older guys, you know what I'm saying? That they, a lot of them had a lot of time, you know what I'm saying? Some of them had license, some of them might have had 50, 60, or whatever, whatever. And they were just sitting, yeah. they were just sitting down, basically calling themselves, you know, trying to uh, school younger dudes, you know what I'm saying, about, you know what I'm saying, who Martin Luther King was, what he stood for, and. How, how basically the younger generation I am. And I remember, and I was like, and then when I walked down there, of course, you know what I'm saying, I, I was like, and I, I used some foul language, I was like, man, you know, man, F Martin Luther King, man. He ain't, but I didn't say it meaning it, I said it really because I knew it was gonna provoke a conversation. So so when I said it, all of them was like, man, what you mean, and this, this, and that, this, this, and that. And so when the conversation popped up, I said, man, y'all got the nerve to sit here and talk about how we should honor Martin Luther King, our ancestors, and we done did A, B, and C, and X, Y, and Z. We sitting in prison, like we sitting in prison, like majority of y'all probably, if you're not affiliated, you retired. The people that y'all talking to, you know what I'm saying, they gang members, the, the, just the stuff that go on in the streets, the stuff that we was doing before we got here. Like if you look at the at our at our uh, culture as a whole, it's 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 not many that respect the movement. Even some of the people who have who are successful, they are successful to the point of where they don't want to continue, they don't want to step into the dream and try to make it what Martin Luther King was saying. They just are yeah. successful people who don't obey the law and found and got educated or maybe and found a business and they don't made a way for themselves. It ain't because they right. honoring the ancestors or anything like that. They just found a way to, to get further away from their own people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and right. I really and, right. and, and I can be honest, like I, I can say that from personal experience. Like since I've done what I've done and got where I've got, I'm more so relieved to be further away from them than to go back and deal with them because you know what I'm saying, they'll they'll kill you. They'll they'll kill you before, you know what I'm saying, and this and this, you know what I'm saying, but like right. but to but to uh, piggyback on everything that you were saying, like it is like yeah, but let, let, but let me jump let me jump in. Okay, I, I get what you're saying, right? And, and it, you feel somewhat relieved and all this thing. But again, th th no disrespect. Absolutely none intended to you or anybody else. But that's part of that conditioning that happens to us that makes us afraid of each other. Yeah. I... But we'll expect but we'll expect we'll expect people that don't look like us, the people that don't look like it, we'll expect them to say, No, don't don't go to the other side of the street when my brother or my sister is walking down the street. Or don't pull me over in the mall when you see me looking at the clothes. And you don't pull the white people over at the, in the mall. But we said we expect them not to act like that. But then we do the exact same thing. We criticize them for, and that's because we've been programmed. We got to get back to that point to where we really truly love each other. But that is not going to happen until we deal with whatever trauma that have caused us to be open and susceptible. Uh, susceptible to being conditioned to hate on each other like yeah. that. I, and I, we gotta get back to. But go I, ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. Like no, nah, I, I agree with that. But you know, 
from my personal experience, I have to say this. You have to start dealing with them, dealing with that issue from a distance. Like, you you can't be head on. You you got to have to use some kind of wisdom, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, to even deal yeah. with that because you, you can't deny, you can't not acknowledge that they'll kill the leader. They'll crucify the leader. But, and not they don't even know we, you can understand as a leader that uh, somebody may be conditioned, somebody may be programmed, and you gotta use right. wisdom in order to deal with that because you know you put yourself in a situation, even trying to get there because it, outside of the conditioning, you are also a threat to the lifestyle of some people that don't care nothing right. about if they've been conditioned or, or if they've been program they don't care nothing about that you a threat to what they doing if, if they living in a right. lifestyle if they if they selling dope if they maybe if they prostituting women if they if they doing certain things illegal you know what i'm saying they might not care nothing right. about that so, that's how they eat that's how they, that, eat. That's how they yeah. eat so it's you know and like i watch a lot of people with platforms and, they, and i'm grateful for, for social media for this reason you know what i'm saying i watch a lot of people with platforms yeah. able to gain a rapport with people right. before actually going into these communities. If you, once you gain that rapport, you gain some kind of level of understanding and respect. It's not right. going to be as much tension and hostility in the atmosphere once you step into these zones and these areas that you, you know what I'm saying, that you want to help. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you, you know, so I get what you're saying though. Yeah, and, but another, here's, here's the thing, something I used to say to the guys when I was in rotation all the time. I can't tell you how to eat. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. But that's one of the things that we need to start to approach. When we talk about or talk to these guys that are getting it, however they're getting it, trying to influence them to like, look, you're not only hurting yourself, you're hurting the community. Trying to get them to understand that when their stomach is growling, it's hard. So you got to introduce other ways that they can get paid. You right. feel what I'm saying? And take care of themselves. And then you got to feed them. Yeah, if you can't do this, I didn't get this way overnight. You didn't get this the way you are overnight. It takes time. It's a process. Right. You know, we're, we're more immediate with this conversation that we're having today because of what we talked about yesterday and identifying some of the problems that occur within the community. But at the, at the same time, I do acknowledge that there is a process to being able to get to this point to where you can understand what has been done to you, who right. it is harming, you know what I'm saying, why it is harming you and continues to harm you today, and what you can do about it. It's a process of getting there. Right. But people have to also be willing to sit down and say, okay, let me listen to this. And that's where you can't, when you get successful, Right. But when you reach that certain level where you can't afford to get to a better place because you want to live in a good neighborhood, you want to be around good people, so on and so forth, you got to always stay connected. Man. Right. you got to always stay connected right. and, and, and find a way to communicate with those individuals that don't get it yet. When you, when you have been blessed to be in a position of understanding, you have to always remember that you become a teacher right. and the onus is on you. The onus is on you. Sometimes you're going to have to take the lick. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like Dr. Martin Luther King did. You know what right. I'm saying? And others right. like Malcolm X, Megan Evans. All of them. You know what I'm saying? They, they sacrificed and lost their lives. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, when you take on that mantle, and you take on that mantle sometimes knowingly and unknowingly, willingly and unwillingly, because people start to look at you, like you said, with a sense of admiration and respect right. because you've reached a certain level in this society. So you have taken it on, whether you wanted to or not, and you have a responsibility, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to the community, to your people, to the, to, to the human world, in my opinion. Right. You have a responsibility to do and say the right things, be responsible. And I think that's where we just get it so wrong, man, when we become financially independent or whatever the case may be. We get it so wrong where we think we don't we don't have a responsibility to uphold. Well, hold on. Let me let me let me let me cut you off right there. Because now I think what you speaking on coincides with what you were speaking on at first. It's it's yeah. not that I don't think it's everybody that reached that level that don't understand the responsibility. I think right. even though they've made it, there's still yeah. that level of trauma and brokenness that they still yeah. carrying the program and the, and the stuff that's deeply rooted as well. You just, you yeah. just, you may make, you may be in a better financial place, but you still dealing with a level of, 
Yeah, you dealing with that because you know what you fought so hard to get away from something yeah. that has been programmed that you shouldn't love and like and care about. And, right. and it's now it, it's colliding. It's just hitting in a different way. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you you've been right. able to remove yourself, but it's still you're still dealing with it. Yeah, you've been able to remove yourself from an environment, but you can't run from yourself. No matter where you go, you're gonna always be there. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And, you, and that pain you take with you, it'll manifest itself in different ways, in a different location, but it's still there. Yeah. yeah you've achieved your financial success, but you're still a broken individual, and you need to correct those things. But see, the thing about that is this: you got to be conscious and aware. You know what I'm saying? You got to ask yourself, wait a minute, when such and such said this or did this, why did I feel like that? Let's why see. did I feel like cussing them out? Or why did I feel like saying something hateful? Or why did I, you know, you got a question. You got to always say why, why, why? You know what I'm saying? Like kids, do you know how kids are always, why is this dad? Or why right, is right, that? Right. You got you to gotta do that. Let's you got to do that to yourself. It's, you know something what I mean? it's, it's something I've learned. It's something I've learned being out, especially when it comes to uh, interacting with people, man. Uh, brokenness is a hard thing to face and admit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. A lot of people have learned to function in their brokenness and at the time you try to put their brokenness in front of them and make them look in the mirror they don't want to they don't want to em embrace uh brokenness to become better they they rather they looking at it as you trying to strip away what has what how i have survived how 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 my defense mechanism how i cope how i cope with things brokenness is a hard thing is a is one of the i think one of the hardest things in life, you know what I'm saying, to really 